Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, you should definitely consider joining the family by subscribing and turning on your post notification bells. Now, if you watched the previous video, you'll remember that we spoke about Black Home Birth Matters ATX. And today we'll be talking to the creator and founder of that program, which is Ulrike. Now, I won't even get into the long talk and I'll allow her to explain everything and introduce you to the program. So let's go. Today we're talking to somebody who I've been anticipating to talk to for a very long time and she is the creator and founder of Black Home Birth Matters ATX and I am just so 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 thankful for you guys. I know you guys are very young but I appreciate the work that you guys have done already. So, but before we get into the formalities of that particular program just give us a little a brief synopsis of who Ulrike is. Yeah, um, I'm Ulrika. I am a midwife um, for the past five years here in the Austin area. Um, I feel really passionate about women being able to birth at home uh, whenever and whenever possible. And so just trying to help facilitate that in as many ways as possible. Um, and um, I identify as a woman of color. I am uh, biracial. Um, so that's pretty important, I think, piece to the important piece of the puzzle for me, at least just because I want to, you know, elicit change and it's important to me to serve, you know, my community. So, okay. Um, I have three kids. I live in the country. Um, you'll probably hear them screaming down the hallway at some point. Um, yeah, that's it. I think. Okay. So you say you've been doing midwifery for five years prior to that, what were you doing and what made you make that switch? Oh, that's a, Long question, that's a long answer. Um, prior to um, becoming a midwife, I um, when I have a degree in anthropology from, uh, from college and I never applied it the whole time. Like when I was in college, I worked in a flower store and I worked with flowers. And so when I graduated school, I just continued doing that. And I did that for like almost 20 years. Uh, so a really long time. And then at some point um, in that time, the uh, home birth as a was introduced to me like it, it obviously it's the thing that happens but it, to me we're just so used to people birthing in the hospital right. can you hear me okay with the child crying in the background it's okay it's fine yeah. you'll hear mine soon <laughs> um so um i you know i guess i knew that people could be born at home you know my father you know he's 80 now but they were born at home and so i knew that it was possible but just you know there's like a disconnect that happens anyway long story short um let me just text my husband to get the crying toddler. So um, sorry, Roxanne. This is like. Uh, um, anyway, I was not working after my the birth of my second daughter, and it seemed like a really good time if I was going to make a change and do something more meaningful besides working in a flower shop. Uh, that that was the time to do it, and so I just had this moment one night when my daughter was like a year old, where I was like, I need to do something meaningful. I need to do something that makes a change. And I knew I wanted to be a midwife. And so I just looked up programs and signed up and then just didn't let myself quit. And so, yeah, I guess once I learned about home birth, that's when it kind of sparked the idea for me and it just wasn't the right time. Right. And then when I had the opportunity, I just went for it and then didn't let myself quit even if I wanted to. Okay. Well, <laughs> well tell me, how did you end up in Austin or were you always, or have you been here for a very long time? We've been here for 13 and a half years. I'm originally from right outside New York City, right from Northern New Jersey. Okay. And so yeah, so I was pregnant with my oldest daughter and my husband's job offered him a position in Austin and we were happy to leave New Jersey. And so we took- Okay, okay, so that's what, okay. So now Black Home Birth Matters ATX, what prompted you to do that? That's a good question. You know, I just um, I just saw in my own practice that um, that most of the women that were seeking home birth were white, and I thought that can't really accurately reflect people's desires because I know that you know if a lot of people had that as an option that they would want to do it. You know, I know that ninety eight percent of women do birth in the hospital, um, but that two percent of women has got to exist kind of across the board. And so um, I just wanted to, you know, I, I don't know people's circumstances, but I just know that if finances were a piece, a piece of the picture that prevents somebody from seeking home birth, I wanted to remove that. And so 
Um, I just wanted to do this fund specifically for black women um, in the Austin area. Um, just so that if, you know, if they were interested in home birth that they could have it, you know? And so um, it doesn't, you know, some, there was a community uh, conversation among some um, midwives about the birth fund and um, they, were, they were a little bit confused about it. And, um, you know, it doesn't cover all of the home birth fees, but it, it covers a portion of it. And so um, yeah, just to make it feasible. Okay, so I have a question. So how are you guys funded? What is so, your special? Yes. So we have been, so we started this in June of 2020 and it pretty much all the money that we've raised has been from like social media outreach and reaching out to local businesses and just doing it like piecemeal bit by bit. I think in total we, we've raised in the past year and a half, maybe $30,000 and like every single dollar was like hard earned. We really just, you know, bit by bit, it just kind of dripped in, you know? Um, and so that's a lot of work. Um, and for not a lot of reward. And so we've actually recently started working with a grant writer so that we could have access to grant funds. And so okay. that's coming, like we haven't applied for any grants yet, but that's coming up really soon. Okay, so what can people like myself or the general public do to help you guys grow or whatever? What can I help you guys need from us? Yeah, absolutely. Like word of mouth is great, you know? Um, we have, um, we do have, yeah, word of mouth is like the biggest thing, just, you know, like direct people to our website, direct people to the Instagram page, just the more exposure that we have, the better. Um, and, you know, if you have in your community, like tell, like you had an amazing, beautiful home birth, uh, which I wasn't there for because I had a birth myself <laughs> that day. Um, but, you know, and just the, telling your friends and your family and your community just about, about, about having your babies at home. And then, you know, and then should people, um, be interested in the birth fund, letting them know that it's there. Okay. And do you have staff or are you doing this all by yourself? So the staff is very small. It's myself and one other woman, Lena, um, Lena Pesak, um, who is your midwife, so you know her. Um, and then we are right now uh, bringing in some interns because we're doing all the things and we're not able to give everything the time it just needs. Um, so we are bringing on some interns at this point. Right now, it's still officially just the two of us, but um, we hope to have like a small team of maybe three additional people helping us just do all the all the things. Okay, so I know you said you raised 30,000 in the last year and a half. Do you know how many families have been impacted? Yeah, so last year, um, the first year we didn't actually um, have anybody apply for the fund, but last year in 2021, uh, 17 families uh, were able to benefit from the birth fund. So that's very exciting. I don't yeah. know if you know that I was one of the persons that benefited, which is one of the reasons why I feel so strongly about this because it helped me and my family out immensely. Oh, uh, that, that makes me so happy. Like that's what it's all about, you know? Yeah, about. well, and I can't give back financially right now. So I'm trying to give back by doing this. Um, yeah. But what is, your, what, what is your overall goal? Where do you see this going? What do you want to see happen? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, well, I mean, in this year, just specifically in 2022, we're hoping to double that number. So we're hoping to reach 35 women, you know, this year. Um, and that might be a little lofty just because right now we're still like working on the grant and everything, but that, that's our hope. Um, and then every year, just it may not be reasonable to expect that number to double every year, but just continuing to widen that circle. So just continuing to, um, you know, just disperse funds to as many people as possible. We also, part of the fund, we think that a big key part of um, just bringing birth back into the home and, and supporting women is that um, it's really important that people have practitioners that look like them. And so we also want to, um, part of the birth fund is also to assist black student midwives in the Austin area, just assist them in that process. It's a, it could be a long process. It, you know, I personally have apprenticed for five years and that's a long time. Um, and, you know, people are doing this with children and it's, uh, you don't get paid typically. And so we'd like to offset the cost of books or, you know, the cost of um, supplies when you're, you know, building your practice or paying for module fees or licensing fees. And so just whatever like little bit helps make that road a little bit less challenging. We also want to do that. So um, we haven't yet helped any student midwives or new midwives, but um, since we're currently at zero, we'd like to, you know, at least have two this year. 
um, maybe more. Um, and obviously just keep getting the word out because we need more, more black midwives too. This is true. It's so funny looking at physically looking at you and hearing the words coming out of your mouth. There's kind of, for most people, there'll be a disconnect because you don't necessarily look like you have that connection to the community, the black community. So this for me is just so exciting, right? Um, but now for persons who contribute, because you know, there are some critics or persons that will give, but not give so willingly or what have you. If they were to say, what am I contributing to? How do I know that you're taking the money and doing what you, in, you said you were going to be doing? Like what proof or how does that work? For sure. Yeah, well, initially, just going back to the first thing you said, yeah, I'm like definitely very white presenting. But, um, you know, I mean, my mom is black and my father is German. And so that's how the genetics un unfolded. Um, uh, so yes, definitely very much. And I've kind of bumped up into that my whole life, right? I mean, people have no idea that that's part of my heritage. And, you know, you can imagine kind of how that unfolds, people saying all kinds of terrible things or racist things in front of me, not knowing better, and then well, having to step two. But um, uh, but as far as um, with people curious about the birth fund and knowing, I mean, we try to be really transparent. And so there's not anything necessarily on the website. We have tried to do updates via social media. Um, but at this point, 100% of the funds that we've raised, minus operating costs, like minus needing to um, like pay for like website hosting or paying for, you know, incidentals or an accountant to help us oversee all that stuff. I mean, a hundred percent of the funds have gone to birth fund recipients. And so that's really, I mean, if somebody needed proof of that, I mean, we would certainly happily provide that. No, would it help if the recipients or is there a place for them to go and leave a review or make a comment just so people can at least keep track of that or see something? For sure. That's actually a really good, yeah, we've actually discussed having, you know, if people were interested in letting us post something, you know, like a photograph and maybe a little blurb on our social media or have a page of testimonials on the website, that would be amazing because like these are, yeah, like all like yourself, like all real people have benefited from. from I'm this. ready. So who can create the page for testimonials? All right. All right. I'm going to work on it. Okay. Please. Yeah. I thank you. Thank you. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> you you know because also it's it's a little bit of a you know I always feel like a little protective of people right like I don't want to take advantage of the fact like I don't want to ask you for anything in return right but right. so it always feels like a little um like a balance for me but if you are willing to do and anybody who's willing like nobody's pressured it's not a requirement of the birth fund but if people are excited and want to share like whenever we get an email with a photo of a baby from somebody that had an amazing home birth like that's just like that's what it's all about so yes we would love love for that for you to do that, Roxanne. Thank okay, you. absolutely. So we talk about that when, when I get off, I'll text you. Awesome, yes. Okay, um, so now if persons like myself, let's say five of us, whatever, wanted to contribute $10, $20 a paycheck, I mean, every dollar counts, right? Is, do you guys have kind of any kind of system set up for that? We do. So if you go through the, um, either through the Instagram in our link in, in the bio, there's a link that takes you to where you can donate and also on our website, there's a donation page and that takes you directly to the um, fundraising um, website that hosts our, our, our efforts. And so you can directly, you can pay $10 a month if you wanted to and just have that automatically set up or you could do a one-time donation for any amount really. So yeah, I, uh, through the, either through the Instagram, you can do that or just through our website, which is um, www.blackhomebirthmattersatx.org. Okay. All right, so I know you don't have the testimonial thing set up yet, but have persons, recipients like myself, have they been messaging or emailing or reaching back out to you guys to say thank you? Are people appreciative? Yes, definitely. I mean, not everybody, but certainly like, you know, a handful of people the past year have reached out and just, yeah, communicated that with us and sent us pictures. And How does that make you feel? Amazing, amazing, you know, because it's just what it's all about. And then, then that that they even take the time to email us after the fact, just to share, you know, photos of their babies, and that just feels really special and just like, like it made a difference. And that's what it's about, you know. Well, now that I'm familiar with midwifery and all of that, and especially in the Austin area, I'm so glad somebody took the initiative to do it. But again, I know a lot of persons might be a little bit awkward, like, oh, she don't look like whatever so i'm glad you're brave enough to do that and i'm so i'm just so overjoyed at how vocal you are on your social media i absolutely love it 
Thanks, Roxanne. Y yeah, no problem. So I know you <laughs> kind of mentioned that you're a midwife or whatever. Do you think that is, especially in this area, is it growing or people are just still a little bit, uh, I think it's definitely growing. I mean, the I know that the number of birth workers and <clears throat> midwives, you know, getting going through programs and then becoming new, it, it just keeps growing every year. Plus the community, the, the population in Austin keeps growing. So I think it's just astronomical, you know? Um, there's a lot of midwives. It's a good problem to have. You know? Okay. Better than no midwives in the community, for sure. No, are you, do you work independently or do you belong to a birthing center or how does that work? Yeah, I'm independent. So just my own okay. practice. Okay. Well, I really appreciate it, Ulrika. See, I told you there it was going to be very short. But if there's anything that you feel like we left out that you want to add or anything about the page or what do you want people to, or you think you said everything already? Yeah, I think I said everything. Just, yeah, I mean, just please, you know, just share and, you know, just continue to spread the word that we exist because we're just here. Like we, whatever we have, we want to give it away. And so that just feels really good to us. So just... Yeah, and there'll be a good fundraiser in a Mother's Day fundraiser. We did it last year and that was very successful. Mm -hmm. um, and so we'll do that again this year. So just people should keep their eyes out around Mother's Day for, for that. And did you already post that on your social media? Or are you waiting until not yet. Yeah, not yet. I feel like if we do it too early, then people forget yeah. about it or lose interest or whatever. So there's kind of like a hot window okay. when you're supposed to start engaging people with that information. Um, so probably in like early May, we'll start. Um, giving the heads up that it's coming. Um, yeah. Okay, I look out for that so I can repost it. That's awesome, Roxanne. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate thank it. You. And I haven't seen you since you were pregnant. So good to see you. I know. I, I was so looking forward to you being there that night. But when Lena thank told you. me you had a birth of your own, I'm like. I know, I know. I couldn't even believe it too. Cause I was like, as long as my client doesn't have her baby, I'll be there. And then of course it was like in the car. I think there was a, wasn't there a full moon that night? I forget, but. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but I really appreciate it. And again, I'll do everything that I can do on my part to help however I can. Awesome. Thank you so much, Roxanne. All right. Take care, love. Thank you. Have a good rest of your day. You too. <laughs> Bye.